Every plant here has a purpose. Every seed has a story as well. It seems that every seed does have a story at Seed Savers Heritage Farm in Northeast Iowa. But the favorite story around here is the one that started it all, morning glory seeds given to Diane Ott Whaley by her grandfather. He came out with this little white pillbox full of these little black seeds. He said, did you know my parents brought these seeds over from Bavaria when they immigrated? I had a living link back to ancestors that I never knew about, but the seeds brought them to life. And brought to life a passion for gardening. And it has this wonderful little golden berry and it's sweet. It also created a commitment to preserve rare seed varieties that led Ott Whaley to co-found Seed Savers Exchange, a nonprofit started in 1975. When we see people coming into our gardens here and they see tomatoes of every size, shape, and color, and they see this beauty and they understand what genetic diversity really is. This genetic diversity is on display in Seed Savers sales racks across the country including many varieties dropped long ago by commercial seed companies in favor of more profitable seeds. This is part of the reason why 90% of crop varieties have disappeared in the last century, leaving us with fewer food choices. This diminished diversity also makes our food supply more susceptible to threats like disease and drought. The field work at Seed Savers Heritage Farm ensures that an entire spectrum of tastes, nutrients, and other benefits are preserved for the future. There we go. Wow. One of the uh, best job perks mm. around here. Taste is. testing this moon and stars melon is just one of multiple quality butter. controls to make sure the best genes get passed on after each growing season. And seed samples are regularly tested to see if they still sprout. Seed Savers also encourages seed saving and exchanging among individuals, made possible through listings in their annual member catalog. And across the Mississippi River in La Crosse, Wisconsin, Seed Savers is helping with a new concept, a seed library. Users can check out seeds like they do with books. When the notion of a seed library came across as an idea, we thought, Oh my goodness, you know, it's such a perfect fit with this community because there's already so much awareness. Awareness that can be seen at events like La Crosse's annual Earth Day Fair. There, the librarians distributed seeds from the collection Seed Savers had stocked. Can put the other lettuce stick right here? People checking out seeds promised to plant them, grow them out, and return the next generation of seeds to replenish the collection for the following spring kind of a, a colleague and they said that's kind of an ugly bean. Training on how to um, save the I, seeds is also provided at the bottled, library. Speckled. If you wouldn't mind splitting open a pot or two as it passes, sure. it passes. So this is how we do the real work at Seed Savers. We get audiences <laughs> to do it. That work will pay off because these beans can grow next year, produce another stalk, and propagate again and again. The same way that Just seeds have been saved and bred by small-scale farmers for thousands of years. And although this bean will live on, the prospects for many food species have become more and more limited over time. Seed companies once offered thousands of crops, but many locally adapted varieties disappeared as regional seed companies consolidated. Then, after World War II, seed companies heavily promoted hybrids, crossbreeding two plants carefully selected for specific traits to meet consumer demand. Pollen from one fertilizes the other. The resulting seeds are sold for their desirable qualities and consistent performance. But those traits aren't passed along to the next generation, meaning gardeners can't save seeds to use again. Because when you plant seeds from a hybrid, you might end up with one of the parent types or the other, or you might get nothing at all. Seed saver seeds don't have that problem because they regenerate through open pollination by wind or insects rather than hybridization. Special care has to be taken to prevent unintentional crossbreeding, like covering ears of corn with paper bags. We've got about 18 different varieties. We're right in the middle of corn country, so this is the best way for us to grow a lot of corn and successfully prevent it from crossing with the field corn that our neighbors are growing. 
That field corn on neighboring farms and throughout the Midwest is primarily made up of a handful of closely related varieties. That lack of diversity comes with a risk, like in 2012 when drought devastated Iowa's corn crop. Well, most of the state corn in the state, because they were, it was made up of the same genetic material, reacted the same way to the drought. We got a corn crop because we had the diversity. With drought and floods predicted to become more common as the climate changes, preserving plant biodiversity can help important food crops weather these changes. The variety that might not be in the marketplace today may be the uh, key to solving a climatic problem 100 years from now. To hedge against that loss of genetic diversity, the loss of varieties that may be hardier or evolve to grow under warmer conditions. Seed Savers maintains a cold storage seed vault holding more than 20,000 species. And Seed Savers also has seeds in the global seed vault. So we could actually store four and a half million samples. Mm -hmm. Built in a mountain on the remote Norwegian island of Svalbard, the so-called doomsday vault will keep seeds safe through any imaginable global disaster. Very good crop. But back at the La Crosse Shared Public Library, dedicated gardeners bring in the seeds they've carefully grown and prepared, in effect writing their own small chapters in the greater story of saving seeds and genetic diversity. We need to save all the pieces so that plant breeders can have what they need in the future. It's not just one saving one red tomato. There's a whole variety and beauty out there.